In this video I'm going to go over some tips and tricks in pocket multis that will hopefully make the game easier, but also make the game a bit more fun as well. Up until this point there has actually been a few Rick and Morty games. These didn't really do the TV show much justice though. Generally they weren't really received by critics very well or anything like that. I find that games about TV shows or films are usually made just to make advantage of the hype of the show and just to keep the brand going, rather than giving you a game that stands out in its own right. So as well as going over things that are going to make you a master of pocket mortis, I will also, where it makes sense, talk about the game as a whole and whether or not it's actually any good. So what you need to know going in is that Pocket Mortys is very similar to Pokemon in a lot of ways. Instead of lots of different Pokemon, you've got lots of different types of Mortys. Because of this, you can approach it with similar strategies to Pokemon. The main part of the game takes place in these battle areas that you access from a portal. These are open areas filled with Morty trainers and a boss. Your main goal here is to beat the boss Rick of each area, while also levelling up and collecting more Mortys to battle with. Unlike Pokemon though, you can't just leave and have your Mortys healed whenever you want in the middle of a run. In Pokemon you could just stop and go to a Pokemon Center, in this game you can only do that once you beat an area's boss. If all your Mortys get beaten and you can't revive them, then you have to start an entire new area from scratch. So tip number one, use your items, pick up all the items in a battle area, and make sure you get the item package in each area. This game is driven by using heals and revives to make it through each area. I find this very difficult because as a gamer I love to hoard all of my items and I actually never use them. But in this game, before going into each battle, you need to check your team to see if any need healing or reviving and actually heal them or buy the healing stuff you need. You definitely can't win by being stingy, you have no choice. It's a game about stamina. You can make this easier and save your schmeckles by using tip number two, which is early on, use the crafting tables to craft healing items. Up on the screen and in the description I'm going to put the recipes that you need to know to create certain healing potions. This is generally more important early on in the game. Pocket Mortys is all about keeping your Mortys healed throughout the run, so these are some of the most useful crafts you can do. This becomes less important as you get more Mortys, but in the earlier game it's very important to save your schmeckles because you're going to need them for later on in the game. I want to take this time to say that although this game is very similar to Pokemon, this is an aspect of Pocket Mortys that is actually better than Pokemon. Because you can't just leave and heal all your Mortys, you have to think about each battle and strategize with your items and your schmeckles. I like this about this game because it means that your decisions mean a lot more and it's a lot more tense for you. Tip 3 is to choose which Morty you're going to use before you enter a battle. Your opponent is always going to send out the Morty directly behind them. So just look at the Morty behind them and then decide which one would be best to fight it. If you have seen your opponent's Morty before, you can find its type just by checking the Morty deck and then selecting the best counter. Counter being if your opponent is going to use a Rock Morty, you send out a Paper Morty. If you haven't seen your opponent's Morty before, you can usually guess its type by just looking at it and using some imagination. For example, Greaser Morty is kind of a rough character and Spoon Morty, well he has a spoon with him which is hard, so these are rock types. Peace Morty is peaceful and non-harming like paper. Advertising Morty is carrying a paper like sign, so it's also paper. Mustache Morty has facial hair which can be cut, so is scissors. And Double Morty, you could imagine, could be cut apart to make two Mortys, so it's also like scissors. It's a weird logic, but it actually works most of the time. So if you haven't seen the Morty, you can guess its type and put up a correct counter. If you're very uncertain about what type of Morty your opponent is going to use, put out your one true Morty first, because like your starter Pokemon in Pokemon, he is slightly stronger and faster than other Mortys of the same level. Again just to say that the biggest issue in this game is actually that these mechanics aren't explored more. If the game had more types than just rock, paper, scissors, and the characters had more moves that were similar to their type, I think this would have made the combat a lot more interesting. But because there are so few types, all the Mortys kind of feel the same, the only difference is the way they look. This also leads to tip 4, which is to read the character bios. This isn't really a gameplay tip, but it's a really fun part of the game. Like I said, a lot of the effort went into making the character designs, and this is where the game's humour is also hiding. Generally, this game doesn't have too many jokes in the dialogue, but the character bios are brilliant. This one's really good, like Business Morty, he says that one of his characteristics is returning videotapes. I have to return some videotapes. So we go on to tip 5, which is to catch as many Mortys as you can, early on especially. You can catch wild Mortys after getting your third badge if you start buying the Morty Manipulator chips. You can also just make these chips using a circuit board, a tin can and a supercharged battery. This makes this recipe one of the most useful early on. When you catch a new Morty, it starts following you with full health, even if you weakened it. That means you can use it right away in the battle area, making the whole thing a lot easier to complete. Getting a full team of Mortys as quickly as possible is very important in making the earlier part of the game much easier. So early on, basically you want to focus on getting healing items, then once you can make and find manipulated chips, use those to get as many Mortys as you can. 
Also, when catching Mortys, make sure you go for a type that you don't already have. The chips are rare, so you want all the type of Mortys as soon as possible, so you can always use the right type in a situation. What I mean by this is if you have a rock and a paper type, try your hardest to make sure the next Morty you get is a scissors type. Tip 6. Action points are just as important as health. Don't use the same attack over and over. Because you can't go and heal your Mortys at any time, your action points can run out very quickly, which is how many times a certain Morty can do a certain attack. So basically, don't use strong attacks if you don't need to. Don't just spam the strong attacks over and over because you usually have less of them. Especially if the Morty you're fighting doesn't have much health, be sure to switch to one of the weaker attacks. This means that you don't run out of AP on either attacks and you can always use the right ones when you need to. It's just like Pokemon. You can look at the attack strength of attacks by holding the attack button to decide which one you want to use. Tip 7. Always swap your Morty if it's weak against its opponent. Using the earlier tips, you shouldn't ever have to use the wrong Morty type in a battle, i.e. paper versus scissors. But if you do, it's always worth using a turn to swap your Morty. Even though you lose a turn and they'll attack your Morty you take out, because it's strong against it, it won't do much damage. Tip number 8. Only use attacks that do damage. Lowering defense or raising your attack isn't really worth it because in the turn that it uses, you can do enough damage to outdo whatever the effect that move just had. Battles in this game are pretty short, so it just isn't worth it. If there is a very tough enemy that you can't beat, what you should aim to do is lower its accuracy to make it useless. A move like Haunt, which Spooky Morty has, is good for doing this. To finalize, in each area, you can use a general strategy. Your goal is to beat the boss of the area. There will be a lot of enemies in the area, you don't want to fight them all if it means that you'll run out of health and mortys and can't beat the boss, because then the whole experience was a waste because you don't get your badge. What you should do is you should work your way to the boss, collect all the items within your reach. If you already have a full team of mortys and you don't want any more, don't craft any more chips, just focus on the healing items. And avoid most of the optional enemies in the area. You can then fight the boss. So here I beat the boss and there are some more enemies left, but I'm low on health. I'm going to kill this guy with what I have left and then leave to try and save the money for more chips to get more Mortys, rather than staying and having to use any money I've got to buy more potions because then I won't be able to get any more Mortys. If you finish the boss of an area, you've caught all the Mortys and you're not strong enough to fight any more opponents, a good way to get some extra experience is to just fight the single Mortys to wrap up the area. To summarise, you have to be ready to give in in this game. It's a stamina game and if you know you can't beat every enemy in the area, just beat the boss. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope this stuff helped. Overall it's a fun game and I would recommend it, even though I've said the gameplay is quite simple at times. If the game had more types than just rock, paper, scissors, and the characters had more moves that were similar to their type, I think this would have made the combat a lot more interesting. If you enjoyed the video please subscribe, I make weekly gaming videos for anyone who's interested. Have a look at my channel, I've got loads of discussions about games like Fallout and stuff. Thanks very much guys.